So if we wanna maximize these guys' growth potential, we have to understand uh, their nutritional needs and requirements. So in order for us to do this, we have to understand components of uh, a diet and then what makes these guys require those components. So that's what we'll be learning about in this video. We'll be learning about nutritional requirements of animals, the components that go into it. So protein, fiber, um, minerals, vitamins, and energy to make sure these guys grow to the best of their abilities. So this is essential for everyone with livestock as we've got to make sure that these guys are well fed so that they can do their thing. My name is Teal Simmons and this is Agriculture Explained. Animals require a certain amount of nutrients in their daily diet for them to fulfill their nutritional requirements. So this will allow them to function correctly as well as to grow. So when food is eaten by animal, it is digested and the food matter is broken down into uh, more basic units uh, of nutrition. This will allow for the animal to uh, undertake different functions and to grow. So it is essential for animals to get the correct proportions of these requirements. So these requirements are enough energy, protein, fiber, vitamins, minerals, and water. So all of these have to be in the correct amounts um, for the animals. Now the um, proportion will vary depending on the animal as well as uh, it will depend on their growth stage that they're in and there's many other factors as well. So uh, in short, it depends on the animal um, for the re uh, nutritional requirements. So it's also important to understand what dry matter is. So dry matter is a term that we'll be using a lot and essentially what it is is the dry material within a food. So if you took all the water out, that would be uh, the dry matter of the food. So we'll start with energy. So energy is required for uh, a range of different functions. The first one is maintenance. So this is uh, the very basic, almost survival uh, processes for animals. So that's digestion, circulating blood, um, all of the very basic which keeps it alive. Next is production. So that's production of milk, eggs, uh, any uh, almost product that you get from an animal. So energy is required to uh, produce these. Growth, uh, we know what growth is. Uh, I guess it's just um, building muscle mass. So we need energy um, to grow. So the next is reproduction. So animals need to grow their reproductive organs as well as, um, I guess for female animals, need to be able to uh, grow their uh, young during pregnancy. So energy is required for that. And then finally, activity. So just moving around, uh, doing animal things, energy is required um, for those functions. So as you can see here, I've written up a couple of examples of the uh, energy requirements for a sheep, a pregnant ewe, and a lactating ewe. Now, it's important to note that all of these um, energy levels or energy requirements are in um, metabolizable energy. So if you don't know what um, metabolizable energy is, we have a video on energy digestibility, which explains all of that. So go check that out. Um, but so here we have the metabolizable energy in megajoules. So that's just a unit of measuring energy um, per day. So a sheep that is 40 kilos, that is just in maintenance. So it's not growing, it's just, uh, I guess, surviving. It's not losing addition, it's just staying the same. Will require 7.4 megajoules of energy per day. Now compare this to a pregnant ewe. So there's gonna be, um, as well as the maintenance, it's also gonna be um, uh, during having a reproductive function. So. The pregnant ewe needs 8.2 megajoules in energy. So the difference, I guess, between here is um, goes towards growing the lamb. Finally, lactating ewe. Lactating ewe is almost double that of the pregnant ewe. So it has to produce enough milk for the lamb, uh, as well as for it to um, undergo maintenance. So as you can see here, it's this just is a really good demonstration of how the nutritional requirements change, even for the same shape. So the shape before it gets pregnant, it's this during pregnancy, after pregnancy when it's lactating. So just for reference, a standard beef steer has a uh, energy requirement of uh, 27 uh, megajoules per day. So that's almost four times that of um, a standard sheep. So effectively you could say, uh, you could have uh, four sheep or one beef steer. And so this is the kind of things that then we can um, make judgment about when choosing our enterprises um, based off their, uh, I guess, nutritional requirements and then what our land can provide for them. So another really uh, interesting point is that different foods provide a different amount of energy. So generally grains um, and fats have a higher amount of 
uh, energy that they can give to the animal, whereas uh, hay and uh, more roughage will provide less. So an example of this is um, oat grain can provide 12.5 megajoules per kilo, whereas oat and hay will only provide 9.3. Now that's almost a 25% difference. So if you're factoring in, I guess, the cost, you'd have to work out well, how much um, megajoules am I gonna get, I guess, per dollar, and then how is that gonna uh, affect our um, production? So understanding the um, energy given off by different feeds will help us to create different um, diets for our animals. So if you wanna, if you wanna formulate a, a diet for, say, your sheep, you gotta make sure, first of all, it's cost effective, and then also it has to meet the 7.4 megajoules a day. So grain is a great way to provide all that energy to our animals, but we've got to be careful because ruminating animals like our cows uh, and sheep, they are not as tolerant to a lot of grain in their diet, and they can get a thing called um, grain poisoning, which can really set them back. So we just have to keep that in mind when formulating our diet. So the next nutritional requirement is protein. So protein is the material that makes up most of the animal. So that includes the muscle, the skin, uh, hair, anything really uh, except the bones and fat is uh, protein. So proteins are required for the animal to grow. And what a protein actually is, is a chain of amino acids. So an amino acid is a, a group of compounds that uh, bond together to form pretty much this really long chain. And so when this chain forms, it will bend and twist in a particular way, which give rise to your proteins. So essentially, amino acids are almost the building blocks of proteins, and proteins are the building blocks of animals. So when it comes to ruminants, ruminants have a great advantage where they can make their own amino acids with their symbiotic relationship with microbes. So this is a really powerful thing that um, ruminants can do because what they can do is they take fiber and they ferment it in their rumen to produce their own um, microbial protein. And then they can eat this microbial protein, which will give them their own amino acids. So we don't actually have to give ruminant animals any uh, amino acids because they can produce their own. However, if we do give them uh, more protein, it will help them to grow faster and increase their, um, I guess, muscle mass production. So unlike ruminant animals, monogastrics like pigs uh, and us, uh, we have to be given all of our amino acids. So we can't um, produce any of our own, and so all of them have to be supplied in our diet. So that's why pigs can't uh, really graze like cows can. So when formulating a diet, there's commonly used um, things called meals. So a meal is a high protein feed, and usually it's a byproduct of um, some process, but you get, say, a sunflower meal, you get meat meal, there's cottonseed meal, almond meal, anything with meal on the end is a high protein feed. And so these are really good as uh, it's an effective way to give your animal a lot of protein, but they are also really expensive. So you gotta weigh up your, your cost benefit with this. Is it better to give them a high, um, I guess, costing feed for greater um, muscle mass production in which you can sell? Or is it better to, I guess, cut down your, your costs, which will almost reduce your um, income? So it's a, it's a fine line. Uh, it's best to ma maximize profit. So you gotta, um, I guess, weigh up your cost benefit. So any animal that is increasing in its growth will increase its requirement of protein in its diet. So any animal in puberty where you get the maximum amount of uh, growth will, will require a greater amount of protein in their diet. And this is so that they can take the building blocks in the protein, break it apart and pretty much build their own protein um, as say uh, meat or skin or anything like that. So fast growing animals will require more protein than animals that are just uh, maintaining their weight. So next is fiber. So fiber makes up the bulk of um, the feed. It assists with the movement um, through the digestive system. So it's, it's essential that we have a lot of fiber uh, in the diet as it pretty much makes everything run smoothly. So as I was saying before with the ruminant uh, animals, they can turn fiber into energy and protein. And that's because of the, uh, the microbes in their gut, whereas uh, monogastrics can't. So, the ruminants can take a, a high amount of fiber in the diet, whereas monogastrics 
cut. So commonly in ruminant diets, we refer to the grain to roughage ratio. Now this just um, shows how much grain there is uh, in proportion to um, roughage. So it's a good idea to get a, um, a ratio between 75 to 25. Uh, to 80 to 20. Now this will give uh, enough energy and protein through the grain and enough roughage. Now some feedlots can try and push that up to uh, 90 10 and that's really trying to uh, increase your protein in the diet. And then um, there's also, I guess you can take that lower down if you want, don't want to spend as much money on the feed and get a 50 50 or you can have them just on uh, pasture. But with pasture, you're not really formulating a diet. Uh, you're just kind of letting them go in your pasture. So remember, the more grain you have, the more chance there is that your cattle is going to get grain poisoning. So when you're pushing it up to, say, your 90s, you're, you're running the risk that um, you're going to set them back more than what you'd have if you had less uh, grain, and then that's just going to cost you uh, more money than if you almost was in the, the safe zone. So when it comes to terminology in our feeds, anything that has a less than 18% crude fiber uh, percentage is called a concentrate, and anything that is greater than 18% crude fiber is roughage. Now, um, I mentioned uh, crude fiber. Now, when you say something um, is, say, crude fiber or crude protein, that is almost uh, saying the um, pure amount of, say, fiber or protein. So uh, a lot of times in these feed labels, you'll, you'll hear crude protein and that just means like the pure amount of protein within the feed or crude fiber and that yeah again is the pure amount of uh, fiber in the um, feed so lastly we need vitamins and minerals in the diets of our animals now these are mainly for uh, metabolic processes and don't have uh, too many other um, I guess functions it's yeah mainly for uh, maintaining processes and allowing these process processes to uh, be undertaken in the body. So uh, ruminants, this is another massive advantage for uh, ruminants. They can produce their own vitamins. So uh, vitamin B and K are the main ones. But again, with the, their symbiotic uh, relationship with microbes, they're able to do this. Uh, monogastrics, you need to supply them all with their um, with all their vitamin um, that they need. Minerals need to be supplied to both. Um, some of them is calcium and phosphorus. This can be um, supplemented in their feed, or you can give them a, a lick salt, or if you're making up your own feed, um, you can just add um, vitamin and mineral mixes uh, to that. So lastly, and it's almost without saying, all animals need water. There's a whole range of um, functions that water allow the body to do, such as it's a medium for chemical reactions, so your uh, metabolic reactions. It's a transport medium. It, um, it does a whole lot of different functions. So you need to make sure that all your animals have as much water um, or available water as they want. And, and all of this will uh, allow your animal to have the correct proportions of their nutrients and will also allow for a healthy diet. So finally in this video, I thought it'd be good uh, to go through an example of this. So I grabbed a packet of calf starter. We have uh, a bunch of calves uh, that we were, we were raising and so we got some calf starter to get them going on uh, solid matter. But in every packet, I guess, of um, feed, you'll get a, um, a little uh, note or piece of paper pretty much telling you the analysis of um, the nutrients in, in the feed. So it might be on a separate piece of paper or it might be on the back of a packet. But I've written it up on all the ma major points on the board here. So we've got uh, calf starter. It's recommended between 1 to 12 weeks. Now it also recommends that you don't feed them any more than 1% of their live body weight. So just from knowing that it's for, say, uh, calves, and it's also recommended for um, kids, uh, goat kids, not, not human kids. Um, so one to 12 weeks. So from this, we can probably make a projection of what we think, without looking at everything else, what we think the protein levels and the energy requirements are gonna be. So calf starter, it's gonna be calves. Now these calves are gonna probably require a lot of protein because they're going to be growing quite rapidly. They're going to um, be putting on a fair bit of body mass as they grow. So we could probably say they're gonna have quite high energy needs uh, as well as protein needs. And this is exactly what we see. So um, we have a crude protein level of 22.5%. Uh, now this is all as uh, dry matter. 
Next, we have our energy levels, which is uh, 12.5. Now, this is in megajoules metabolic energy, and that's per kilo. Then we have our crude fat. We didn't really touch on crude fat, but uh, fats give pretty much provide energy. That's at 6.6%. Then we have crude fiber at 9.9 and added salts at 1.2%. So this is, um, I, I guess, a standard analysis of a, a feed. And you'll be able to see this on any packet of feed. Uh, you pick it from the store. Or you can have a look at uh, some labels online. Also on the label is what is in it. So reading off of this label, there's so soybean meal. So um, there we go with our meal, so high protein. We have uh, canola meal, corn meal. Um, we've got amino acids, so added amino acids. We've also got uh, probiotic, um, which are pretty much added good bacteria. So because this is for uh, calves, so we want to establish a really good microbiome in their gut, or in their um, rumen. To be more uh, specific and but this will allow them to be eating more i guess fiber and allowing them to kick off those fermentations which allow for um, microbial protein and increase uh, energy efficiency from um, fiber there's also um, the more probi probiotic there's also um, limestone and sodium carbonate so this will add our um, minerals. So they add, they'll add the um, vitamins and minerals. There's also added um, vitamin and mineral premix. And so I guess that will um, add all their um, vitamin and mineral needs. There's also vegetable oil and salt. There's also Australian grains and their associated products. So that's everything that makes up our uh, feed for our calves. So now say that we're at a, um, a store and we're, and we're wanting to buy um, some calf starter. We should look at all the different um, pellets and, and starters and have a look at well, how much uh, crude protein are they getting, how much energy are they getting. Um, and then that way we can uh, make the best selection for our uh, calves. But if you want to make your own diet um, and formulate a diet for your own animals, it's first you have to know uh, what animal you're uh, providing for and what stages of life they're in. So as like with our uh, calf starter, this is for calves, so quite young. It's a specific nutritional uh, requirement that we're providing for a specific age group and specific animal. So we want to narrow down our diet for that one particular need. So then from there, we need to select our um, feed. So as I was reading out before, all our different meals, all our different grains, what, what else are we gonna add to make sure that they're getting their vitamins? And we wanna make sure they get enough energy too. So we have to make sure that we're getting everything in the correct proportions and we're uh, meeting all their nutritional needs. And then finally, there's no point in making up your own feed if it's gonna cost you more and not be as effective for our animals. Um, than compared to say a standard starter feed or just feed, uh, another feed in general. So it's important to understand, uh, first of all, your, your economics around it, do a price uh, comparison, price um, analysis on your own um, feed. But if you are formulating a diet for your animals and it's at scale, then it probably will be um, economical for you to do it recommend getting a um, animal nutritionist to check that out just to double check um, the uh, feed meets the nutritional requirements for your animal because you don't want to be giving them feed that's not uh, the best of them and then you're losing uh, i guess gains that you could have been making so it's all about i guess making the best choices for your animal and providing them the best uh, nutrients so that they can uh, fulfill all their um, i guess potential that they have to grow in another video, we'll have a look at exactly what we can do to formulate a feed for a specific animal at a specific time using specific uh, feeds. And then um, we'll do a, uh, a price comparison. Pretty much everything you'd need to do uh, to walk through how to formulate a feed and make sure it's effective. So stay tuned for that video. So there we have it. That is the basics of animal nutrition. So it all comes down to protein, fiber, energy, uh, minerals and vitamins as well as water um, and we need to make sure that's all in proportion so that these guys can grow properly thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video and got a lot from it check out some of our other videos we got some on animal production we've got some on plant production and we even have some on regenerative agriculture so um, subscribe to make sure you're keeping up with the content 
We're also on Facebook, so check us out there. Uh, thanks for watching. My name is Till Simmons, and this is Agriculture Explained. Hmm? Hmm?